Alrighty. ATI, AER410, OmniMax hybrid, using a polymer lower, 18 and a half inch barrel. This is the standard factory magazine. It's supposed to hold five. I can only get four in them. And this is number nine bird shot just for function testing. Alright, everything seats in good. And this gun has already had almost 200 rounds through it. So it's, it's well on its way towards its uh, break in period. It's working fine. I haven't had very, very many issues with it since about 80 shots in. Alrighty. Fine. You can see. Let's see. Yep, that one opened up and locked back. So everything's good. And now what we're gonna do? Let's see here. Oop. There we go. All right. It's a little windy out today. Everything doesn't want to sit still. I'm going to use the 100 grain slugs as purchased from ATI themselves. And we're just going to see what it does on water target. And then we'll switch over to have a fire hydrant down there. And we'll see what happens on that fire hydrant that is out of pressure. But we're more shooting to see how tight I can get a group on it. And I know you heard it. When I insert the magazine, it closed on its own. Alright, so let's hit that jug. Well, alrighty then. That was pretty exciting. There's the leftover jug. It was more than I was expecting. Alright. So this magazine that I'm using with the slugs, I have modified to shoot, so it'll now hold six, okay, from the original magazine. So now I've got another five slugs I'm going to empty into that fire hydrant, or a extinguisher, rather. back over here. Okay. New camera. Alright. So on that one, firing the five slugs into the fire extinguisher, it did not lock open. Bolt closed. I dry fired it. So and it's it's inconsistent from magazine to magazine. So let's go look at our targets here. Catch our jug before it blows away. So fire extinguisher. Let's see. I found it. First shot square. I was aiming this point so it hit a little high but it entered pretty square so those slugs are moving pretty fast because I know with this type of steel my 45 ACP won't go through this so those 410 slugs are going pretty fast and then these are the next four shots one two three and then four so pretty good pretty good penetration there and that first one did exit. Alrighty. All of the powder's lower down. I should have aimed lower just to see. We'll take out the nozzle. I'll load another. I'll load another five. 
here in a moment. We'll see if we can get it to go again. Alrighty, and then aiming for the center of the paper. So you can kind of see that hole right here where it entered. It sure did blow a hole clear through it. Came out the back end. It's pretty good expansion there. Okay, so we just saw our water jug target. We've got four more rounds in the factory magazine of birdshot. I'm going to do a function test in the other direction so you can see as the rounds actually eject. Um, just for those who are curious, I am shooting in safe directions both ways I turn. We're going to shoot it with the cover closed this time. I should charge it first. Everything's good. Alrighty. Not too hard to get follow-up shots there. All right, everything works like it should. So we'll turn back this way, and then we'll shoot at the fire extinguisher again. Alrighty, and here we go. Perfect. Okay, so here we are. Let's look at our fire extinguisher again. First shot came a little high. I was trying to get right at this point, and then as it knocked over, I figured I'd put all the other points right here aiming at the bottom. As we can see, they grouped pretty good. And this is at, oh, no more than 15 yards or so, maybe 20. But uh, it's a good little rifle, shotgun. Plenty of power in the little shotgun there, and uh, fairly accurate too, out to 20 yards or so as we were shooting just now. And I know uh, during dove season, I was able to nail birds flying at about 40 yards at least. Uh, so after you get the hang of it, it's pretty soft handling and, and uh, fun to use. Okay, folks. As an aside, after digging through the target, cleaning up my mess, came across these here. So this appears to be one. This is one of the 410 slugs that had um, that had glanced off because it wasn't at the right angle to go straight through. And see, it's pretty well flattened there. And these are foster type slugs. I've dug these out of their shells and investigated them. These are rifle foster slugs. This one is one that went right through. And it didn't go through and through, but it went in and hit the back side. This must have been one of the ones that I shot lower on the fire extinguisher because it's covered in powder here. But you can see it's pretty well mushroomed out from hitting the, the one side of sheet metal there. But it didn't completely get destroyed or flattened out like this ricochet did. And in this, I carry a 40 Smith & Wesson. And this is one that I fired through the fire extinguisher, emptied of powder at point blank range, just as a comparison. So this is a 165 grain jacketed slug, same caliber as this one. And you can see they had, they look about the same as far as wear. So based on what I know of 410 foster slugs, and after finding these two, I know that most other slugs that you find for the 410 are of a soft lead. Um, and I couldn't find the one that I shot into the water jug. That would have been really telling. But based on 
what I know of other 410 slugs, these should be a lot more obliterated than they are. Most other 410 slugs are made out of soft lead, and this to me indicates that this is a bit, this is a harder lead that ATI uses in their slugs. Uh, granted, this 440 Smith and Wesson is held together mostly because of the jacket, but still, for it to be as well put together as it was and go all the way through, and then that first one to go through and through, and I could not find that one, the first 410 slug. So pretty interesting. Always interesting to see the slugs after they're fired. Alrighty, thanks.